Hey everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself, Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So before moving on to the questions, let me inform you that you can download the PDF of this session on the Telegram channel and the link of that channel is in description below. On that note, let's begin with our first question. Which company will develop the National Urban Governance Platform under the National Urban Digital Mission? So here we have five options out of which Digit is the right answer. Now, Digit itself is a platform of e-governance foundation. Guys, what is this national urban governance platform? What is this mission all about? These are the things that we are going to discover now. But do remember this thing that this mission, national urban digital mission was launched in February 2021 only. Therefore, it is a very recent mission and there are high chances that this can become a question. So do listen to me very carefully. The very first thing here is that I will start with the National Urban Digital Mission and then I will move on to the National Urban Governance Platform. Okay. So this mission was launched in February 2021 and the basic purpose of launching this mission is to develop different applications and portals that will provide the government services to the citizens online and obviously the services will be easily accessible to the people. It will also increase transparency and reduce corruption. So these were the benefits of this national urban digital mission, not only the benefits but our objectives as well. Okay, so under this mission, the National Urban Governance Platform will be developed, which will be a e, which will be basically a cloud-based platform. Many users can use this platform. Apart from this, nine other service applications will also be developed. Now you don't have to memorize the names of these nine applications because these are very basics. For example, there is one application that will be developed for your bill payments, the bill payments that are due towards the government. So you can use that application to pay your bills. Okay. So such kinds of applications will also be developed under this national urban digital mission apart from this platform. Now, this platform is the major platform under this mission. Therefore, in order to develop this platform, the uh, national urban digital mission has partnered with digit platform, which is a platform of e-government foundation. I hope that this is now understandable to you. The next point here is that digit do has a full form. Now, what is the full form? Digital infrastructures for governance, impact and transformation. This is the full form of digit. Okay, so that was all about the National Urban Digital Mission. I hope that you have understood that mission well. Which of the following startups has developed the Bhasha Sangam mobile app? So we have Udan, Misho, Rubik, Madhubhashi, Multibhashi. Out of these, Multibhashi is the right answer. Now, on the Rashtriya Ekta Divas, now when do we celebrate the Rashtriya Ekta Divas? It is celebrated on October 31st, the birth anniversary of Sardar Vallabhai Patel. So on this day, the Education Minister Dharmendra Pradhan had launched the Bhasha Sangam Initiative for School, the Bhasha Sangam Mobile Application, Ek Bharat Shresht Bharat Mobile Quiz. Okay. Now guys, I know that this is a bit old news, but it is very relevant and can become a question in your phase one also. Therefore, even it is the old news, it is your responsibility to cover it in your current affairs. And I have picked this question precisely because this is very important. Now, under the, these three missions, basically the children and the youngsters are being targeted and they will be acquainted with their own language. So we have 22 scheduled languages, 22 official languages in India. So children and youngsters will be acquainted with their own language. For example, I am residing in Delhi. So nobody is going to tell me to read Telugu. Okay. I will be acquainted with Hindi. So this is the concept of these three initiatives. Now under this Bharat Sangam initiative for schools, basically the children will be given 100 sentences in Hindi if they are from North India and those sentences will be readable. So basically by giving them 100 sentences, the 
initiative aims to acquaint them with the script of hindi that is devnagari so this is how reading writing and uh, pronouncing skills of any language will be developed in children and youngsters okay so bharat sangam initiative for schools has been developed by ncert it will be available on diksha e pathshala and other 22 booklets the basic purpose i have already told you that is to acquaint children with the indian languages bhasha sangam mobile application now this has been developed by department of higher education and my government so these two organizations are the broad organizations but the actual developer or the technical partner you can say is the multibhashi startup next is again so in this application basically 100 sentences of everyday usage will be given to the youngsters so that they can be acquainted with the indian languages ek bharat shreshth bharat quiz app basically aims to promote the culture of india and acquaint the youngsters and the children with the culture geography topography of each and other states in india okay so that is the basic purpose of this quiz application i hope that now this initiative and the mobile application and this quiz application all of these three initiatives are clear to you with state government has launched the uttam beech portal for providing quality seeds to farmer farmers so here the right answer is haryana haryana has launched this application as you can see the news is very small because this is in actuality a very small news okay so basically the portal aims to provide quality seeds dispersal of seeds will be done through this platform only so all the processes will be done through the online application and this will help in bringing transparency in the process next is which state has launched the e sarkar app on a pilot basis to make administration work paperless quick and easy for citizens so here the right answer is gujarat now it is very easy to remember the purpose of this application from the name itself e sarkar sarkar ka kaam on online platform okay now Gujarat government has launched this on the Rashtriya Ekta Divas and remember that this is a pilot launch and the full scale launch is due for the good governance day that is celebrated on the birth anniversary of Atal Bihari Vajpayee okay so december 25 is the date of good governance day next is the application has been integrated with the integrated workflow and document management systems app so this application was also launched by the gujarat government back in the year 2005 for administrative purposes if you don't remember this point then it is also okay for you guys because i don't think nobody anybody is going to ask you this point in your examination but do remember that this application belongs to this state and okay the next point are the dates rashtriya ekta divas and the good governance day okay which of the following is the new bird of jammu and kashmir union territory so here the right answer is college uh, pigeon so guys if you remember in your nabard phase 1 this year only there was a question on uh, snow uh, sorry there was a question on the state animal of ladakh okay so you are very well acquainted with the importance of state animals and birds this is in the news itself therefore it assumes a greater importance over the other state birds and animals okay so jammu kashmir has declared college pigeon as its state um, not state but ut bird and this is hangul the ut animal of jammu and kashmir your task is to tell me the ut animal as well as the bird of ladakh in the comment section below next is which indian state has received special invitation to attend the international seed conference 2021 so here the right answer is telangana now first of all understand this conference then we will move on to the details of the state okay so what the state is uh, 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 is assumed to do is supposed to do at the conference okay the first point here is that united nations food and agriculture organization you must know that fao is a specialized agency of united nations 
okay so it is organizing this international seed conference and this will be a virtual conference now the headquarters of fao is in rome italy therefore this virtual conference will be organized from rome italy only indian state of telangana has been given a special invitation to attend this conference which will see a participation of experts from 195 countries okay now you don't have to remember this number this is just for your information that from the wide spectrum of experts one expert from telangana is also going to address the session also chair a plenary session so yes of course we will be discussing about that but first pay attention to this thing that telangana has got this uh, uh, favor we can say to uh, to attend this virtual conference now the next point is telangana seed corporations managing director dr keshavulu so do remember this can become a direct question in your examination that who is the md of telangana seed corporation because he because of this news so he is going to address the conference of on this topic quality seed production system a success story of india telangana as a seed hub okay so if you don't remember the entire title of this conference then, then also it is okay because nobody again is going to test you on the title of the conference but yes the name of the person who is going to address this conference on behalf of telangana can is be a question in your examination next point is that dr gesha valu will also ask to co chair the parallel session which is also entitled as seed enterprise development and international trade again this is a very basic uh information you don't have to memorize this as well and this i have already told you next point is which organization is supporting the international methane emissions observatory of unep so here the right answer is european commission now guys i know that from the name itself it is uh, it seems like a very huge news very difficult news but it is not so in actuality it is basically a database international methane emission database that will collect the data on methane emission the data on actions taken by the governments to control the methane emission and the research that is going on to mitigate the impact of methane uh emissions because you should know that methane is the second uh, second dangerous cause of global warming after carbon dioxide okay so it is increasing the global temperature therefore the uh, the steps to control methane is very important now unep in association with Un european commission has launched the international methane emission observatory to revolutionize the approach to methane reduction by interconnecting data with action on research reporting and regulation basically this means that the data available on the research on the methane emissions and the regulations the actions taken by the governments to control methane emission will help further the policy makers in uh, making the policies that will help in developing uh, in mitigating the impact of methane as well as controlling the emissions of methane next point is that the observatory will focus on methane emissions from the fossil fuel sector that is the energy sector and then it will expand to emitting sectors like agriculture and waste so initially the focus will be on the energy sector next is that this observatory will be hosted by unep so your task is to tell me where is the headquarter of unep okay and this is the budget of this observatory for 5 years now this observatory is going to help in achieving the targets under global methane pledge now what is this global methane pledge so in september 2021 us has announced this global methane pledge to reduce its own methane emissions and later on it was joined by eu and the other countries and a total of 90 countries have now signed this pledge to reduce the methane emissions by 30% by 2030 okay so do remember global methane pledge is also important the targets under this pledge are important therefore you need to memorize them next is who heads 
SEBI's new IT Projects Advisory Committee. So here the right answer is Abhay Karandikar. So he is going to chair this new panel that will advise SEBI on how to use new age technologies like artificial learning, machine learning, etc. So how can SEBI use these technologies in its operations and then increase the effectiveness of its operations. So these recommendations will be given by the seven member pa uh, panel that will be headed by uh, Abhay Karandikar, who is a director at IIT Kanpur. Next news related to SEBI is that SEBI has reconstituted its own technical advisory panel and now it will be headed by Deepak uh, Fatak. So you need to tell me that Deepak Fatak is also chairing a very important committee and you need to tell me the name of that committee in the comment section below. I have taught you this when we were co covering the committees only for your NABAD examination. Now this committee will recommend measures for changes and improvements in the market structure given the technological changes. So basically both the panels will help SEBI in incorporating technology in making use of the technology technology to improve its functioning okay so guys that was all about today's session i hope that you have liked this session do not forget to download the pdf via the link given in description below thank you so much